everyone is doing great today. I think us just being here today, it really does remind us, we're, we're here in 2020. It really does remind us that if we're here, whatever happened to us in 2019, we can just rest assured that God honestly just walks through it all with us. So let's sing this next song out together, come on. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. At the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me, there was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I been set free. There is a cross that bears a burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. Oh, my dad left a dead beneath.
Cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy, come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy, come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be
in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He died so that we can be born again. Because we were once dead. But now through him we're not anymore. Now we live with great expectation. And we have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you. Pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see so be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure many trials for a little while church it's a new year it's a brand new year 20, 2019 is gone now Maybe you did something in 2019 that you're not proud of, that you're not really sure of. Maybe you're a little far from God right now. Maybe your relationship with him is not the best. But there's good news, that we can run to the Father again and again and again and again because he's gonna be waiting there at the finish line every single time, welcoming you as you are. Does it matter what you did in your past life? Does it matter the sin you're holding on to? Because God loves you the way that you are. He loves you regardless. He sent his son, the only one he ever had, to die so that we can live. We, the people that don't deserve it. But because of his mercy, his grace, his fulfillment, his love, we can have that. We can have a relationship with him. And there is a name already written for us in the kingdom of heaven, waiting for us. All we have to do is just accept the gift. Just like we sang in these last three songs, he is the living hope. He is the other person that is in the fire. He is the other person that is in the waters, holding back, holding it back so that we can push through. There is a finish line and there is a grand trophy at the end. Now it's up to us to keep our eyes fixed on the champion that is Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Father God, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you that we get to breathe and live another day. That we get to worship you, Father. That we get to run to you, Father. Even though yesterday might have been a bad day, but today is a new day. Father, we're in a new year, a new decade. And I pray that this may be a year full of many blessings. That regardless of the trials that lie ahead, that we may count the joy in every single battle because you are standing right there with us, God. That you are holding our hands every step of the way, that we're not doing this alone. We're not fighting this battle by ourselves. You were there for all these people in the Bible, for Paul, for your son, Jesus, and now you're here for us as well, God. And so I pray that we may believe that, that we may be slow to listen to what you have for us, Father. I pray that you open up our hearts that we may be able to listen to what you have for us. That we may be able to find joy when we feel like there is none. And it is in Jesus' mighty and wonderful, beautiful name that we all say together, come on church, amen. Let's give God some glory. Well, good morning, Elevate Church. I hope you're all doing really well. Happy New Year. It is finally 2020. Goodbye 2019, we can say bye to that now. Oop, there's the door. <laughs> so um, we have some new faces up here today. This is actually our student ministry worship band. <laughs> We're super excited to um, worship with you all. And it's been a wonderful morning. 
Wait a second, it's the afternoon, and I've been saying morning this whole time. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. So go ahead and say Happy New Year, say hello to somebody, to let's say five people, five people you have not said hello to already. How are you guys doing this afternoon? How are you guys doing today? Awesome, awesome, man. Before I continue, man, let's say, let's give it up for our youth band one more time. Praise God. You know, they say that the future is bright. Let me tell you, the present is bright. Amen? So glad to see these young kids and young men and women worshiping God and leading into the presence of God. Man, I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Happy 2020. Happy New Year. And yes, I'm the one bringing the word of God today. This it never gets old to see the face of frustration of some of you. You guys probably came excited the first Sunday of the year waiting for Pastor Lewis to preach and you just got stuck with me. I can see it. You guys are like, yo, no tocó el parcero. You know that? Man. I was hoping to, to hear some English preaching. I'm go, I want to hear the Spanglish now. I need a translation device. Listen, I love you guys. Let's stay. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. I'm joking, I'm joking. Not really, but. But anyway, to, happy 2020. Happy 2020. I'm glad. I don't know you, but I'm glad to be here. I know the year, I know the Sunday that we get to worship God. And I pray that, that God may speak to all of you the same way that spoke to me. And that has been speaking to me. Every service that I preach this, I, I receive a, a different message. Same message for a different way. And, and I get challenged, man. And I hope you get challenged today as well. I just hope that. So if you're visiting her for the first time, no, I'm not the main pastor, I'm not the lead pastor. The great lead pastor will be back next week. So come back again next week. And we're going to hear a great, great message. I'm one of the pastors here at Elevate Church. My name is Hector. And I'm going to ask you one thing and one thing only. Is that if you're visiting her for the first time... I would like for you to re, um, take one of these connection cards and fill it out. And once you fill it out, at the end of the service, if you go to the red carpet outside, they're going to exchange this uh, card for a gift. I believe today we're raffling a cruise and a TV, so I'm no, just kidding. If you uh, uh, turn this in, they're going to give you a small gift. It's an appreciation. It's a way to say thank you for worshiping with, with us this afternoon. So I'm glad that you guys are here but let's do what we always do. Let's welcome each other the way that we always do it. So at the count of three, let's give it up, okay, to one another. One, two, three, let's go, church. Awesome, awesome. Once again, happy 2019. Before I pray, before I read God's word, I would like to ask you one thing and one thing is that I want to ask you guys to, to, to stand up, to stand up. I know we usually don't do this, and I know some of you get like, oh, man, listen, I know it's cold outside, so let's warm up. Let's warm up so that way you guys can warm up for, to, uh, for the message as well. And I'm going to read the two verses that we're going to go over in today's message. And this portion of the Bible is found in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to read it. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to continue with the message and it goes like this therefore since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us we do this we do this race by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his chin. Now, everybody says now. Now, he's seated in the place of honor beside God's 
throne. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another Sunday that we get to be in your house worshiping you, Father. We give you all the honor and the glory that you deserve. You are the center of our worship, Father. We're here to worship you, Lord, to bring you the honor, Lord, and the praises that you deserve, Father. Thank you, Father, because you are our living hope, Father. Thank you because we have victory in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because in 2019, while we were in the fire, you were there next to us. You were walking among us, Lord, protecting us, Lord, guiding us. And we know that in 2020, you always going to be there as well, Father, because you are truthful, Father. You are a God that keeps your promises, Father. We thank you, Father, in this day. And I pray now, Lord, that you may speak to us, Lord, that you may help us. To understand today's message, Father, and that we may live it out, Lord, from the moment that we leave this place, Father. I pray, Father, that you may speak through me, Father, and that we may put away any distraction that may come to our mind, Father. We ask you that your Holy Spirit may move among us in such a powerful way, Lord, that, Father, the only thing that we may have to do left is surrender ourselves completely to you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because the time of worship that we just had right now, Father. Once again, Father, speak to us right now. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray and we will say amen, amen. Have a seat, church. Thank you very much. So, yes, it is January 5th. We just began a new year. And guess what? A new decade as well, right? It's crazy how time is flying. And one of the things that I like the most about the end of the year, especially like the end of the year in December, is that when you're watching TV, you see a lot of these uh, programs that they go back through the, that previous year, and they tell you the most significant events that happened on that year, especially, let's say, 2019. What was the most important events in culture, sports, politics that happened in that year? So I want to do something like that with you guys to start off the message. I want to go back and not look the most significant, most significant events or oh, 2019, but the most significant events in the last decade, in the last 10 years. So you're going to be surprised how much happened in this past 10 years that you probably forgot about, okay? Are you guys ready for this? All right, the first one will be Blockbuster. Who remember that, <laughs> right? Who re man, I, I, who, I know some of you guys spent a lot of nights going there, renting a movie, and then going two days later to... To turn it in, I, I think I still owe like $30 of uh, late fees. <laughs> I think they went out of business because of me, to be honest. So Blockbuster was one of them. They, they, they went out of business in 2010. In 2018, Toys R Us went, went out of business, right? Uh, a lot of people felt, you know, sad about that. Uh, during this time, Amazon became stronger than ever. Don't you agree? Now everything is through Amazon. Like the other day, I was talking to my three-year-old daughter. And I was telling her, listen... Somebody's going to bring you a gift for Christmas. And, and I told you, you know who that is? And to be honest, I thought she was going to tell me Santa Claus. She was like, yes, yes, Amazon. <laughs> That's it. So we had to tell her, true story, true story. We had to tell her that Amazon works for Santa. That's why, you know, they have a part-time job during the Christmas with Santa. So during that time, uh, Amazon became stronger than ever. Uh, in 2011, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't want to show this but because they, they pranked me earlier in the other service, but yes. During 2011, people were planking everywhere, and again, that's not me right there. <laughs> that's not me. I didn't do that. I did other stuff, you know, that one. So you guys remember that, that time when people were planking everywhere? Like people were going crazy with this planking thing, Right? 2013, who remembers the Harlem Shake? Who remembers that? You know, like, I, feel like doo -doo 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 -doo. I was crazy, man. Everywhere people were going crazy with the Harlem Shake. All right, 2014, who remembers the Ice Bucket? Challenge, all right? It was for a good cause, okay? But everybody went crazy. I was the pastor. We were challenging one another. Like, I think I got, like, a pneumonia at one point. Like, it was crazy. Now, this is, this is, this is, this is going to, like, impact you guys. Who remember in 2015 the dress? <laughs> you guys remember that one? People were fighting. What, what was the color, the real color of the dress? That, that was, like, whew, 
Crazy, crazy. So in 10 years, a lot happened in our country. I'm not going to go into more detail. In my personal life, let me tell you, in, during this past 10 years, I married the most wonderful and beautiful person in the whole world. As a picture, our wedding. I'm learning this from Pastor Lewis. Have you noticed every message he says something about Bexy? So he can get a, a warm cooked meal. In my case... And so my wife will let me go to Chick-fil-A more often, you know. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I do. During that time, I was blessed by three beautiful girls. I'm outnumbered. I need help in prayer. In 2012, I joined Elevate Church, by the way. In 2012, I joined Elevate Church. And in 2014, Elevate Church was born, as a matter of fact. In 2018, as you guys can see in the picture, by the grace of God, by the mercies of God, I was ordained as a pastor in 2018, February 25th. And also in 2014, I began to do something that changed my life completely that I never thought that I was able to do in my life. And yes, that's a picture of embarrassment after my first day of CrossFit. All right? I literally almost died. I thought, I thought that was the second coming of Jesus Christ. Like I felt like God was, that's it, God take me. This is the time that... I was able to experience what Paul says that he went to the third heaven. I, I think I went to the fifth heaven after that workout. It, it, was, it was crazy. And let me tell you, I began to do CrossFit in, in that time, in, in 2014. And, and like I said, my life has changed a lot since that moment. So if you're new and you have no idea what CrossFit is, let me give you the, the Wikipedia uh, definition of CrossFit. It's a CrossFit is constantly very... Functional movement executed at high intensity. Basically, you're crazy. You're crazy because the amount of workout, the amount of, of things that we do in this place is, 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 is insane, right? But let me tell you, I have learned a lot and it has a lot of benefit. I have received a lot of benefit. I physically think that I'm, I'm in better shape than before. I have developed endurance and strength. I have developed discipline, believe it or not. Because I don't know if you guys know, I work out every day at 5 o'clock in the morning. You're like, are you crazy? Yeah, this is, this is a crazy thing. So I have to wake up at 4.20. I have to go to sleep the night before very early. So that creates a discipline that I was not used to before. And, and, and it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Also, in, during this time, I have met some interesting character, you know, and I mean that in, in a good way. There's a group of uh, friends of mine and that I, that I work out with, that, man, these people are more intense than me. Like, they work out, like, for hours, and then they train more, they train more. And right now, they're getting ready to run the Miami Marathon. They're, like, 26 miles, and, and they're training. And this morning, when I was talking and preaching in Spanish, they were running at a, at a park, and they run, they run, and they invited me to run, and guess what? Not going to happen. <laughs> Not going to run now with them. No way, man. So, but... Not too long ago, they did this race called the Ragnar Race, and they went to Colorado, and I have some picture here for you guys to see. Basically, they had to run 200 miles in two days, and the, and the race is a relay race, and these are the pictures of some of them, and basically, each one of them will run from 10 to 15 miles, and after they will run that, somebody else will continue the race. They were supposed to run for two days, and they were telling me that they did it in 32 hours, 200 miles in 32 hours, and it was crazy. Like at one point, they were like, "I need help," and 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 even though it was, you know, crazy, they say they had a great a great time, and they were experienced at a, a great time running in in Colorado. As a matter of fact, right now in a couple of weeks, they're going to go to Germany to do the same race. And I think I'm trying to join them, you know, so me and my wife can go and second honeymoon. So I'm creating a GoFundMe account if you guys want to sponsor me. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But let me tell you something. These people, they set out goals and they reach them. They set out dreams and they accomplish them. They have expectation and they meet them every time they're running this race. And let me ask you a question. What are your expectations for 2020? 
What are your expectations for the next 10 years of your life? And this is what I want to share with you. The same thing that God has spoken to me, I want to share with you guys. And usually at the beginning of every year, I use a word or, 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 or a phrase to keep me focused throughout the whole year. Sometimes I write it down. And it's funny, I was reading a, a quote from David Ramsey. And he was saying, if we don't write down goals, they're just wishes. Meaning, if you have a goal, write it down, put it in a visible place, and always remind yourself that you want to accomplish this. That's why if you look at my Facebook page, I just put in my, not in the profile page, in the other one, what I want to share with you guys today. And today's word for me, for Hector in 2020, what I want to do is, what I want to accomplish is the title of today's message, and it is Run With Endurance. Run with endurance. The Bible is filled with many figures of speech that describe the Christian life. Sometimes in Ephesians, we see that Paul saying to the, to, 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 the, to, the, to the church in Ephesus, that said, in order to be faithful, in order to be overcome any situation in your Christian life, you need to put on the armor of God. And I know that part in the Bible, in the New Testament, Paul tells Timothy, that we are like a soldier. We are a farmer in 2 Timothy 2. And today we're going to see how Paul describes the Christian life as a race. And that we are runners in that race. That's why in 1 Corinthians 9.26 says, So I run with what? With purpose in every step. And this verse gives us the idea that we run a race with a purpose. And not like we're running with our goal, with our prize. It's not like we're running a treadmill, which I hate, by the way. I, I hate run, running the treadmill. First of all, it gets boring. Like, you, you run in the same place. And second of all, I feel like I'm a ham, ham, eh? hamster. Yeah. Right? One of those little squirrels, you know? I don't know what type of animal is that. <laughs> you're running there on, on the same place, and you're not going anywhere. I hate that. I don't, like, to me, it's like pointless. Elevate church. Today we're going to see what the author of Hebrews, which we don't know who it is, are telling to a group of Christians that at one point were Jewish. These people converted to Christianity. And after some, and due to persecution and hardships, this individual, this group of people were con contemplating going back to Judaism, going back to the old religion. And the author of Hebrews telling them, listen, do not go back. I know it's hard. I know the Christian life is difficult, but it's worth it. So run with endurance. It's worth it living the Christian life. Do not go back. Do not go back to the tradition. Do not go back to the religion. Do not go back to the burden of religion. Jesus Christ is our living hope. Every time that you feel that you're in the middle of the fire, he's going to be there for you. So do not go back. Despite of the persecution, be faithful. The Christian life is a race. And we need to run this race with endurance. And that's the main message that I would like for you guys to live here today. As we run this message, I'm sorry, this race. There's four things that I would like for you guys to keep in mind today. So if you're taking notes, I would like for you to write the following. First, there is a race set before us. Hebrews 12, 1 says, let us run with endurance the race that whom God has set before us. And what I like about this sentence that says, let us run, it's not telling you you run. It's saying, let us run in plural. These words are in plural. And this letter of Hebrew is a calling to all Christians to not do the Christian life by yourself. Do life together. We need to live in community. We need to worship God in community. We need one another. That's why we believe that we are stronger together. We are better together. Man, I want to take this moment to tell you, to encourage you to sign up for a life group as you, go, as you finish the service. That's why we have life group in our church. We believe that, yes, Sunday is amazing, but at the same time, we need to encourage one another with God's word throughout the week as well. In life group, is then when that happens. The Christian life is a race that demands effort. 
It's not a sprint, but a marathon. And this race begins the moment that you trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So if you're sitting down here, it's like, Hector, I don't like to run, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you, even though you don't like to run or you physically cannot run, let me tell you, in the spiritual aspect, you are in a race. And that race starts the moment that you trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's up to you how well you want to finish that race. And how much help you want to get along the way. So when you read in Hebrew that says, let us run this race. The word race in the original that was written in the, in the Greek is the word, the word agona. Where we get the word in English, agony. Basically, this race is hard. It's difficult. Sometimes when you run, you're going to run through high hills or low valleys. The terrain changes every time. I was talking to these people that were doing the Ragnar in Colorado, and they were telling Hector, you have no idea. At one point, we're running straight, and then all of a sudden, this low terrain, and, and, and all of a sudden, we're going uphill, downhill. They have to run in the middle of the night at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. They, they, it was like pitch black. I, I think it was like two people who got lost, but they were focused in the, in the race. They were continuing running. I believe that they even were wearing this lighting things as, 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 as part of the clothes so that way they would, I don't know, fall and people would know where they were running through and everything. The same thing happened in our Christian life. Sometimes we're running and we feel everything's going fine. And all of a sudden we, we go through a patch, we go through a season in our life that is hard, but we got to focus, we got to know, and we got to keep running, understanding that the race is agona, it's hard, it's difficult. That's why every time that you hear somebody saying that the Christian life, everything is perfect, that in this life it's about prosperity, it's about this. Listen, that's a false teaching. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what Jesus Christ taught. Jesus said, in this world you have trouble, but trust in me, I have overcome the world. Jesus is our living hope. Training, let me tell you, training is very, very important. It demands energy. It demands time, discipline, sacrifices, and all that is required if you want to finish the race. In the same way as in the Christian life. You want to finish the race well, man, you got to be disciplined. You need to make sacrifices. You need to have time. It's going to demand energy out of you. That's why the author of Hebrew also said, when you run this agona, when you run this difficult race, do it with endurance. The word endurance in Greek in the original with, uh, where, when it was written is the word hupomone. Hupomone means to be under and remains there. Basically what it means, remain under the challenge. Remain under the difficulty. Remain under the struggle. I know you're going to face struggles. I know you're going to face challenges. I know in this race you're going to face difficulty and trials. But you have to endure. You have to endure. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the race, there's a price. Because this race that you're running, you're not there by accident. That's a race that God has set before us. And everything that comes from God. It's perfect, and it's good. So when we run, when we go through 2020 under the will of God, no matter how dark moments may seem, no matter how many circum bad circumstances or, or, or obstacles may, you may face, let me tell you, God is in control. God is in control. That's why he's telling you to run with endurance. That's why he's telling you remain under the challenge. Remain there. Be faithful. Be faithful. Point number two is that we're not only running a race that has been set before us, but also that we're not alone. We're not alone on this race. Hebrews 12.1 says, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let's run. 
And you may ask yourself, who are these witnesses? And no, they're not Jehovah witnesses. That's not what the, church, the Bible is referring to. This cloud of witnesses that, that this chapter is talking about is referring to the heroes of the faith in the previous chapter, in chapter 11. And I love how Joe MacArthur says that sometimes we had this idea that this hero of the faith is like they're on a stadium and we are the one running and they're clapping and they cheer on us. And Joe MacArthur says, listen, don't get that idea. That's not what the Bible says. Nobody in heaven is looking down on us. So, I don't know. Sometimes we get that idea maybe from tradition that, that people in heaven or loved ones are watching over us. They're protecting us. It is always a grandma or a grandparent or, or a tío or a abuela or, you know, like, oh, pobrecito, you know, let me, let me watch their stuff. Listen, no. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible teaches. What the Bible is teaching here that their life these witnesses, meaning like their testimony, is an evidence that is worth it living the Christian life. That's what it means. When you go buy something, usually on TV, you buy something and they promote, I don't know, an iPad or something. They always bring testimonials, right? People saying, oh, this is what this product did to me, and that's why I recommend it. Basically, chapter 11, remember, let's go back. Hebrew is encouraging believers that they were contemplating the idea of living the faith. Chapter 11 is saying, listen, let's look at them and let's look at the life and let's realize that it's worth it living the Christian life. It's worth it living this race. So in chapter 11, when you look at Abel, you can say it was worth living the faith of Abel. When you look at Enoch, you can say it was worth it living his life because he walked with God. When you look at Noah, you can say it was worth it living the faith of Noah because at the end, him and his family were saved from the flood. When you look at Abraham, you say it was worth it because even though at old age, he received the promise of a son. Later on, God asked Abraham to sacrifice his own son. And when he was about to do it, God provided a lamb in substitution for this sacrifice. So it was worth it. It was worth for Joshua living that faith. Because through that faith, he entered the promised land. It was worth it for those three young men in Babylon to live that type of faith. Because when they were thrown down in the furnace, in the middle of the fire, there was another one there with them. Jesus was with them. So every time that we live this faith, let me tell you, church, it is worth it. They all experience the blessing and the hope of the promise of this life of faith. And God is telling us that today in 2020, we can still receive this blessing. We can still experience the blessing and the hope that this race has for us. It's worth it. So if you're here giving God one last chance, let me tell you, do not give up. Because God hasn't given up on you. Don't give up. I know life is hard. Believe me, I've been there. I know life is hard, but it's worth it. And these witnesses are telling you now in 2020, it is worth it. It is worth it to have a faith like Abel. It's worth it to have a faith like Enoch because one day you and I, we will walk with God. It's worth it to have the faith of Noah because one day we'll be saved from eternal judgment. It's worth it to have the faith of Abraham because the same way that he experienced a son, we have experienced the son of God. And in the same way that he will receive, God provided a lamb for the substitution of his son. Jesus Christ became the lamb of God who died in our place for, our, for, our, for us. The same way. That it was worth it for Joshua, it will be worth it for us because one day we're going to enter our promised land. That means heaven for all eternity. It's worth it to live the lie that those three young men lived back then to live it right now. Because every time that you go through the fire, you're not going to be by yourself. Jesus is going to be there for you. will be another one in the fire. So I don't know if you're excited about this, but I am. I am, and all I can say is worth it running this race. Amen? Amen. I love the way John MacArthur says about this. He says, 
we in ourselves, we are weak, and yet we belong to a mighty company of runners in the race of faith. We're not alone. We're not alone in this race set before us. That's why another advice in this type of race that we find in, Hebrew, in Hebrews 12, 1, is that we need to run this race accordingly. Hebrews 12, 1 says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us. Let me tell you, nobody runs a race with an overcoat or with weight of a lot of baggage. They don't do that. They run light. They strip away everything that may hinder them to run faster and efficiently. 1 Peter 2.1 says, get rid of all evil behavior. Be done. Be like finished, finito, like no more. With all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all, and all unkind speech. We need to put aside, strip away, get rid of everything that hinder us from running towards the goal. Sometimes we, we complain about ourselves like, man, why am I going through this situation in my life? Sometimes it's inevitable, but sometimes because of us, because we don't get rid of those things. Sometimes we see other people that came to Christ the other day, and we see they're on fire. We ask ourselves, why we're not on fire? Why those things happening to us? Maybe just maybe it's because we're carrying around a lot of weight that we shouldn't be carrying around in the first place. What are those things? For the people in the first century were tradition, religion. What about us? Are you still carrying around the old traditions, the religion that you came from? What about the new religion that you have found now that you're a Christian? What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes, even though we become a Christian, we're still bringing the bad habits of the old tradition, of the old religion, into this new life in Christ. And we treat God like a vending machine. And we're like, oh, if I behave, if I do this correctly, maybe God will, will, will have mercy on me and God will give me the desires of my heart. And we're trying to negotiate with God. And let me tell you, every time that you negotiate with God, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Let's say that at your job, there's a promotion. And you, you want that promotion. Maybe for a week, you'll be like, man, I'm going to behave. I'm not going to watch TV. I'm going to, like, drive correctly. I'm not going to go off with my neighbor. You know, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to pray. Five hours a day, I'm going to do an extra push. You know, maybe so maybe God can give me what I want. That's not how it works with God. Every blessing from God, even salvation, is, a gra is by grace. It's by grace. We're not good enough to, to, to receive anything. And however, God, when God gives us that, it's because out of love, out of grace, out of mercy. What are those things that are slowing you down? Tradition, religion, what about bad habits? What about laziness? Let me tell you, an athlete, a runner cannot be lazy. And the same thing goes for a Christian. If you are a, a Christian and you're lazy, you have a huge problem. Laziness will, is going to cut out to you and you will not be able to finish the race. You have to be ready. What about bad companies? Bad companies. Who are those people that you're hanging out with? Sometimes we go hard on the students and the youth. Oh, mira con quien anda y te diré quien eres. Like, you know, be careful you go hang out with. But what about us, the adults? We're always telling the kids and the students and the, the teenagers, but what about us? What about those people that we work with? What about those people that we relate to or that we hang out with? Are those people pushing you in this race or are they dragging you back? Think about it. I have a statement for you guys that I would like for you guys to take home and it's this one. You cannot run the race dragging alone everything from the past. You need to strip away from all of that. Another thing that says in this verse is sin. We need to get rid of all the sin that entangle us. Like not let us run. Towards the, in the race. Another definition of, of sin in this case 
So you guys can understand it better. It will be all the gratifications we like to get, but God is against it. All those gratifications that you want to get, but God is against it, get rid of that. Confess those sins to God and let God forgive your sins. And this race said before us, we're not alone. We need to run accordingly. And number four, we run. We need to run by fixing our eyes on the goal. And that is Jesus Christ. Hebrews 12, 2 says, we do this. We run this race by keeping our eyes on whom? On Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. 2 Timothy 2a, Paul tells Timothy, remember Jesus Christ. In every decision that you make in 2020, remember Jesus Christ. In any decision, financial decision, personal decision, any type of decision, remember Jesus Christ. When it comes to your family, remember Jesus Christ. When it comes to your ministry, remember Jesus Christ. Think about what would Jesus do in this situation? What would Jesus do when I'm treating this person? What would Jesus do in my life? What would Jesus do? This race is not about us. It's about, about us fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ. Fixing our eyes on the finish line. Because everything begins... And everything finishes with Jesus. Amen? You guys know that. I don't know if you guys know this. But runners, when they run, they always look forward. They never look down. They don't get distracted. And there's a lot of distraction out there when you're running. You see the crowd. You see the environment. Maybe it's raining. But they don't run. They don't, when they run, they don't see that. There's an event in track and field. I have a picture for you guys. It's the huddle, huddle event. And I would like for you guys to take a look at that picture. And this uh, event basically is that you run a little bit. You take a few steps. And all of a sudden you see what? A huddle. An obstacle. And you have to jump over. You make a few more steps. And there's another one. And another one. And another one. Until you finish the race. The key in this event is that you never look down. You never look to the side. You always look forward. And I think that's one of the events, one of the sports events that exemplify the best, the Christian life. As you go, you always going to see obstacle. You always going to see huddle. And what the Bible is telling you, what Jesus is telling you, fix your eyes on the prize. Fix your eyes on me. That way you're not going to trip over the huddle. You will never do that. You have to maintain your eyes forward. And keep up your eyes off the ground. Keep up your eyes of the surrounding. Look forward. Look forward. Look forward to the prize. Church, when you run... And especially when you don't have the physical condition to run. After a while, you get tired. After a while, you get fatigued. I, you, this side here in Spanish, head basso, you know, they start hurting. And, and, and you feel like your, your, your shoulders burning, your, 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 your legs are burning too. You get tired. And some of you are like, that's why I don't run, you know, to suffer, you know. But when you're a runner, it gets tired tiring and it gets hard I remember at the beginning I used to hate and when I was doing CrossFit those workouts that was running involved because after doing push-ups and squat, squatting and doing crazy stuff with the weight they would tell you okay run 800 meters I'm like are you kidding me but I remember doing that and I remember I, 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 moments I was running and after a while, after 20 minutes, maybe after 25 minutes, doing the same workout over and over and over, I feel, sometimes I feel like, like giving up. And usually when you're running, you start running, and little by little, you start slowing down, slowing down, and you start getting tired. You start walking, and this is usually what happens. When you start walking, most people go like this. And they sit down, they like, that's it, I'm quitting. And that's how I felt sometimes. I remember at one point I was running and I was trying, 
giving up. And I remember this guy one specific time. He was telling me, hey, man, no, don't give up. We still have one more minute to go. The prize is almost there. The finish line is almost there. We're about to finish this workout. There's only one more minute. I'll be like, yes. And I, and I keep going. I keep going. This is the thing about CrossFit. They don't tell you. In CrossFit, a minute feels like a thousand years. Just like in the Bible, the word of God says that for God, years, a thousand years, and a thousand years, like a hundred years, whatever, a day. Let me tell you, in CrossFit, it's the same. And I remember, I keep doing it, keep doing it, I keep doing it. And when I look at the, at, at the clock, it was still 55 seconds more to go. I'm like, why? <laughs> and I pushed through, and I pushed through, and the guy was telling me, come on, keep going, keep going. Do not give up. You're almost there. You're almost there. And I remember when that clock went to zero. I heard the voice of the coach saying, time's up. Time to rest. And what a relief. What a sense of, oh, I can rest now. I remember at that time being beat up, super tired, sweaty, smelly, dirty. And, but I remember I felt like whew, I was able to finish. I was able to finish. And there's no better satisfaction to know that you finished that workout, that you finished that run. There's no better satisfaction than that. Sometimes you may feel the same in the Christian life. You, maybe you've been running for a while now. and Maybe you're in that station in your life. You're like, man, I'm about to give up. I'm about to finish. And I won't be able to finish this hard. It's hard. My body's hurting. I, I'm, it, my, my arms are hurting. My shoulder, my leg. But let me tell you, when you feel like you're giving up, all of a sudden you see somebody coming next to you, and that's Jesus Christ telling you, do not give up. It's almost over. One more minute. One more minute. And Jesus encouraged you to keep running, keep running. Don't give up. Keep running, keep running. And one day you're going to hear the voice of God saying, time's up. Come to my presence and rest. And what a satisfaction to know that one day we finished the race. That we didn't give up. And then we're going to be rewarded for our faithfulness. That we're going to be rewarded for our faith. And one day we're going to see the prize. And we're going to see Jesus face to face. That's what Paul told the church in Philippi. He told them, no, dear brothers and sisters, let me tell you a secret. I'm about to die, but let me tell you a secret, church. Paul says, I have not achieved it yet, but I focus on one thing and one thing only, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on. I know it's hard. I mean, she, Paul, when he was reading this, he was in prison. He said, listen, even though I'm in prison, I press on to reach the what? The end of what? Of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Jesus Christ is calling us. You see, Jesus is calling you for this race. Jesus in 2020 is telling you, run with endurance. Don't give up. Don't give up. Time is almost over. Time is almost over. We're in the last lap. We're in the last minute. Don't give up. Be consistent. Run with endurance. Why? Because Jesus is our leader. He's our champion. He's our pioneer. He's our perfecter of the faith. That's who God is. Do you guys know where the word marathon comes from? Maybe some of you guys do. And let me tell you the story about the word marathon. Or why we call the marathons, why we call it like that. In the year 490, when the Greek defeated the Persians, there was a man called Pheidippides. Sorry, it's, I'm, I'm not too good in Greek. Pheidippides, Pheidippides, okay? So after they defeated the Persian in the beach of Marathon, they, they, the Greek told, listen, go to Athens and tell our people that we won the, 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 the battle. So this guy, after fighting, he ran more than 40 kilometers. And when he got to Athens, he got to the city, he shouted, Nene Kame, Nene Kame, Nike. Yes, Nike, like in the shoes. And the, yeah, he truly said that, Nike, Nene Kame. What those words mean, we have won. 
Nenekame, we have won. Nike, victory, victory. And after he said that, he collapsed it and he died right there on the spot. So in honor to this, that's why they call marathons marathons. This is the thing about this story. The Shao of Nenekame, the Shao of Nike, was a symbol of victory. We had won, but it also was a symbol of hope. Why he had to run, why it was so important for him to run. Because back in the day, when the males, when the men would go out to battle, the women and the kids would stay behind. And there was a tradition, was a custom that would say that if they, you don't receive news after a while about the battle, listen, we're going to kill, our, kill ourselves. And back in those days, the women would kill all the children and they would commit suicide because they would say, we're not going to become a slave of the next king that's going to conquer us. We're not going to become a slave of the empire of the other nation. We'd rather die than be a slave to those people. So that's why this general told this guy, run and tell them that there is victory, that there is hope, that there's a new beginning. There was hope in that shout. When that guy ran, there was hope because there was victory. These women and children, they had a reason to live. They had a purpose to continue living. They have hope for a future. Basically, they have a new beginning just the same way God is giving you a new beginning this year. This year. Hebrews 12, 2 continues saying, because of the joy I awaiting him, he endured the cross. Talking about Jesus. Disregarding his shame. When Jesus came to this world, he knew what he came to do. He knew what was going to happen to him. And he still was able to endure the race that he was running. He was able to finish. And he was able to endure the nails on the cross. He was able to endure the whip. He was able to endure everything for you and I. Because he knew, because of the joy that he knew was waiting for him. Because three days later, he was going to resurrect. Three days later, there was going to be victory for us. There was going to be a new hope. There was going to be a new beginning. And this guy, the one in the story, when he got to these people, he said, Nene came in Nike, victory, victory. And because of this child of victory, that brought hope to this family, to these women and children. But Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, he shouted something similar. He said, Te telestai, it is finished. And by his death on the cross, that shout brought hope. Brought victory, brought new beginnings, not only to a group of people, but to all humankind. And because of him, we have eternal life. Because of Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life. The same way that for us, the finish line is Jesus the purpose of our race, the, the, the ultimate goal is to reach Jesus. The purpose of Jesus coming to our world were us. To us, the finish line is Jesus. To Jesus, the finish line were us. He came for us. He came for us to give us a new life. And Jesus is telling you now in 2020, run the race, run the life that I came to give you. My question to you this afternoon is, were you willing to run the race? Were you willing to run the life that he so highly paid for you? Many, some of you guys already accepted that challenge. Maybe some of you guys already signed up for that race. But if you're here visiting us, and if you have never trusted Jesus, your Lord and Savior, I'm going to invite you today to trust in him for the salvation of your soul. Jesus Christ, our living hope, our living hope, our only hope. The Bible says that whoever believes in him will not perish, will not live apart from God, but will have eternal life. Jesus Christ is the way, 
the truth, and the light. Nobody can go to heaven except through him. So church, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bow your head. And I would like to invite you to accept the gift of salvation. Why we need to accept this gift? Because the great problem that we have as humans, as, as individuals, is our sin. And the Bible said that we all have sin, including me, including all the pastors in this church. And the penalty for that sin, the wages for that sin, the consequences of that sin is eternal separation from God. For God so loved the world that he gave us a second chance. And that second opportunity, that second chance is in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. The Bible says that if we trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, if we put our faith in Jesus, we're going to be saved by grace. So if you're here visiting us, or you've been coming here for a while and never trusted Jesus, your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you today to take this step of faith. Every time the year starts, we like to make new decisions. We like to be, make the best, the best decision for our life. Let me tell you, there's no better decision today than trusting in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you want to start the, right, the year in the right way, you want to start the next decade in the right way, let me tell you, start by trusting in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He wants to run by you. He wants to guide you. He wants to be there. He wants to you be your father. Jesus Christ wants to be your friend. He wants to be your Lord. But most of all, he wants to be your savior. That's why he came to die on the cross. So Elevate Church, if you, anybody here wants to trust Jesus, your Lord and Savior, I would like to pray for you. But I would like for you also to raise your hand so I can know who I'm praying for. Raise your hand if you want to trust Jesus, your Lord and Savior. God bless you, man. I see your hand. Anybody else? I see your hand back there too. I see your hand here, man. Best decision of your life. Best decision of 2020. Best decision of this decade. I see your, your hands as well. Anybody else? Anybody else want to trust in Jesus, their Lord and Savior? If you're in the overflow, raise your hand as well. Somebody would acknowledge you. I see your hands here on my side as well to my right. God bless you. Anybody else? My second calling is for the church. They say well, you, either you want or not, you are in a race. My question is, were you willing to commit to run this race with Jesus Christ in 2020? Will you allow Jesus to be your coach? Will you allow to be guided by Jesus as you run 2020? Will you remember Jesus every time you make a decision, every time that you run in this 2020? Will you do that? And if the answer is yes, I would like for you to raise your hand as well. Raise your hand if you want to run the faith, the race of faith with Jesus. God bless you. I see all your hands. For those who raise their hand for salvation, I just want to pray for you guys. And I would like the whole church to repeat this prayer for me, after me. As we pray, let me tell you, the prayer doesn't save you. The raising your hand doesn't serve you. The sincerity in your heart is what truly saves you. If you sincerely pray this prayer after me, that's what's going to have, that's it, when the transformation is going to take place. So for those who raise their hands and for the entire church, let's back up these new brothers and sisters in Christ. And let's repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I don't deserve heaven. Today, I repent of my sins. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe you came to this world. I believe that you died on a cross. I believe that you rose again. I ask you to forgive my sin and give me a new life. Help me to run this race. Help me to fix my eyes on you. Save me, Jesus. Give me your Holy Spirit. And live me and let me live a brand new life in you. In your name I pray. 
and all the church and everybody says amen amen congratulations this is the best decision of 2020 that you're gonna make this year god bless you guys let's give another hand to pastor hector for bringing that powerful word what a way to start 2020 man running our race and fixing our eyes on Jesus. I'm going to ask the ushers to go ahead and begin the collection process as I want to give props to the student band that we have. Aren't they amazing? Haven't they done a phenomenal job? These young guys, man, uh, lifting up the name of Christ and the worship time that they had is so awesome, man. And that, that just shows you the quality of young people that we, our church has. So I want to announce and, and promote Student ministry kicks up again this Friday at 8 p.m., right? I know a lot of students are here uh, listening, man. 8 o'clock every single Friday, we have a student service. So listen, if you have middle schoolers, high schoolers, or in college, any you know family members that are in college up to 24 years old, man, I want to invite you toward, uh, to our student ministry every Friday night. Like, let me tell you, the students in your families... They need to be at Elevate Students every Friday night. Let me tell you a little bit about why, man. Listen, the enemy in this world has our students Monday through Friday, countless hours, teaching them things that are not in Scripture. You know, they're in schools listening about the Big Bang Theory and the theory of evolution and, uh, and, and you know, atheism. Is that God is not even allowed to be mentioned. The enemy has a Monday through Friday in the university system. But here at Elevate Church, we have a ministry for your students where we teach them the Bible. We teach them that God is the creator of all things and that the only hope that we have in this life is faith in Jesus Christ. So, man, bring your students. If you're a student and you're not coming, man, I invite you today, this Friday, be here at 8 p.m. as we relaunch our student ministry for 2020. Man, I have another announcement, something else that's coming up in uh, January 13th. We're kicking up our life groups once again. Anybody excited to be back in life groups? That's starting January chapter uh, of January 13. Look at me preaching. January chapter 13. What's up with that? <laughs> January 13th. Now here, this this is the deal. Some of you are new to our church, and and you're like, what in the world is a life group, right? <laughs> so here it is. A, a life group. We have many life groups in our church. There are small groups in our church who gather Monday through Friday uh, for nine-week semesters. And the next one is starting January 13th. We meet up in small groups to study the Bible, to pray for each other, to encourage each other, to serve each other, to disciple each other. Life groups is the discipleship ministry of Elevate Church. This is how uh, we are obedient to make disciples. So let me tell you, man, here at Elevate Church, it's our second step of our mission statement. It is growing in Christ. We believe that it's awesome to come to church on Sunday, hear the word of God, hear a sermon. That's great. You know, experience worship. That's great. But it isn't enough. We believe that God wants more from us. If you read Acts chapter 2, we see that the church gathered in small groups and studied the Bible, prayed for each other, and that's how they did ministry. Let me tell you, not only do we just gather in these small groups and study the Bible as this little holy huddle and pray for each other. No, we put it into action. So every life group plans a community service project to go out into the community. So if you imagine, man, I wish I had a group where I could serve the community. We know that a lot of people are passionate about serving the community. Through life groups, that's what we do. We gather, we study the Word of God, and in that nine-week uh, semester, you guys plan out a community service outreach. Now, this is the thing. February is upon us. February 14th, we know is Valentine's Day. That's when the world celebrates love, right? Well, in that week, who knows what happens in our church every year? Love Week, right? How many of you remember Love Week and Love Day? So Love, love, love Day is, uh, is the same week as Valentine's. Our church gathers all of our small groups, all of our life groups, plan a community service project for that Saturday. And we go out, imagine 20 plus groups gathering together to do 20 separate uh, community service outreaches. Hundreds of people show up, we're all wearing the same red shirt, and we bombard our community with the love of Christ. You, you know the impact that that has had in our town? And listen, this year we want more of you to come. So man, 2020, we're called to run a race, right? We're not going to run the, the, the race of comfort anymore. Let's run the race of faithfulness. And let's actually do what this book calls us to do. And if we do it together, 
man, we can have a huge impact and huge glory for our God. So it starts today. Today is Sign Up Sunday. Right outside, you can sign up uh, for a life group where there's a tent out there and there's a, all the life group leaders are out there. So go out there. You know, you, you're sitting on those cards that, that you guys have. That's like the menu that tells us all the different life groups that we have. Um, I want to promote two specific life groups, okay? Uh, the, uh, there's two new life groups that we're launching this year. It's part of, uh, uh, you know, we're just trying to push for our church to grow spiritually. Not just numerically, but let's learn the word. So we're launching two new groups starting this year, starting January 13th. One of them is on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. It is called the Foundations Life Group. And in this life group, it's going to be taught by me and uh, Gloria and Acelia. Three of us are going to be uh, working together where I will be teaching uh, the, fu the fundamental truths that Christians hold on to. Like, what's the Trinity? God the Father, God the Son. Is there one God? Is there three gods? Like, what's all that about, right? We're going to be talking about that. The importance of the church. We're going to talk about salvation. We're going to be talking about, the, you know, the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to be talking about so many different doctrines that we believe in here at Elevate Church. And I'm going to just be there with you guys uh, throughout. That's going to be Tuesday nights. At 7 p.m. That's foundation. So if you're new in the faith and you want to learn, man, more about our faith, that's your class. Now, another one that we're launching is going to be on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. It's going to be taught by Pastor Hector. He just preached right now. This is more of like a seminary style class. Um, in seminary, one of the classes that they offer is Old Testament survey and New Testament survey. So we're offering that for the very first time Thursday nights. You can sign up for that as well today. Um, Old Testament survey, it's going to be a two-part class. Starts this semester and continues next semester. And then New Testament survey is at the end of the year. So it's like a whole year commitment, right? Um, but it's going to be awesome to you know, just put together a package. Man, you're going to look at the Bible in, in a whole and just dive in deeper and learn more about that. So, man, I encourage you to sign up for the, either of these two classes or any other of the classes that we have. We have for men, for women. We have married life groups. We have uh, Spanish life groups. We have life group for kids. Maybe you're thinking, man, I have kids. What night can I go? Where do I leave my kids? Um, every single night we have life groups for kids. So come any night that you choose. Bring your kids and there will be a class for them as well. Now, here's the ask. Today, we're inviting people to step out in faith and serve in our church. There's a need in life groups. Some, some of you are saying, man, I'm just waiting to be asked to serve somewhere. Well, here's your ask. All right, here it is. There's a need for our life groups, for people to pour into our children and teach them the word of God. What higher calling can there be to influence a young child, right, to the ways of the Lord? Man, 2020, let's run our race. Why on earth are we here? Why did God create us? God has a purpose for your, your, your life. So if you have a passion for kids, if you have, you know, um, some, some experience with leading with kids, we have, we, we have a background check that will run you through all of our, anyone who works with minors goes through that. And then we go ahead and we plug you in. And, and if you could do it Wednesday or Friday or whatever, whatever night you can, this will be a perfect opportunity for you to serve the Lord, right? So with that being said, let's us all stand right now. If you want to serve in that ministry, you can also sign up today to serve for the kids' ministry. With that being said, let us look to God in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, so much for everything that you're going to do this year, God. God, we're anticipating a great year for your glory. Thank you, God, for this great word that we just heard. Father, help us in this new year. Let us see it as a new chapter in our life, a fresh page, a clean slate to start over, to hit the reset button and to reorganize our life. And Father, I pray that this new decade will be a catalyst for us chasing after everything you have created us to be. Everybody here has a special assignment, a purpose to fulfill in your church. So God, I pray that this year they'll find it. And let, let the first step be signing up for a life group. God, I pray if there's anyone here who has never been part of a life group, who is thinking about it, I pray that they sign up today, right now. Like as they go outside, let them sign up and commit themselves to experience more from the church and for you, God, to move in their lives in a powerful way. So, Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for being our living hope, God. Thank you, God, because no matter what happens this year, you got our back, God. We love you. We praise your name. We elevate your name here, God. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray these things. Amen, church. We love you guys. Happy New Year, church. Get out there and be everything that God has called you to be. We love you, guys.